gamer, welcome to the video! When I started this channel I realized I needed to explore lots of games that I never tried and in that way I found many I love to play. In this video I want to suggest you about 30 games that you can't miss out on. I picked games from all types of genres, so the video is divided by genres down in the timeline, but I really suggest you to watch every game of this list, as you never know if you love a game until you try it. Let's begin! Let's start with role-playing games or RPGs. The quintessential fantasy role-playing game can't be anything different from The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. This title tells the story of a hero too young to accomplish his destiny. Featuring plot twists, atmosphere, rewarding progression, exploration and more, Ocarina of Time is a genre-defining title that you really cannot miss. Of course, I can't talk about Zelda without also suggesting Breath of the Wild as well. This game allows you to creatively define the odds to save Princess Zelda inside a vast and amazing open-world adventure. Breath of the Wild is filled with sandbox interactivity, intense combat and compelling visuals, and I assure you it's an unforgettable experience. Switching gears, it's time to take a look at Fallout New Vegas. In Fallout New Vegas, not only you have the most compelling character build seen in a modern Fallout game, but you also have a vast variety of dialogue choice and consequences that will really put the destiny of the Mojave in your hands. Another incredible RPG game that you cannot miss has to be The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. In the shoes of Geralt of Rivia, a monster slayer for hire, you will search for your lost adoptive daughter inside a sprawling and living world filled with characters, stories and emotions, as well as great combat and character building. If you are late to the Mass Effect party like I was, there could not be a better time to play it as Mass Effect Legendary Edition features all the trilogy and DLCs. In Mass Effect, you play as a custom character named Commander Shepard, whose job is to protect the galaxy from an impending doom with his or her crew. This game can transport you into its world and delivers the most emotional story I've ever seen in any game thanks to the choice and consequence in dialogues and the amazing voice acting of the English version. Alright, this category features the shooter games. Starting off strong, Half-Life 2 is one of the best games ever made, period. It has intense combat, a very engaging story, a touch of horror vibes, puzzles, atmosphere and a lot of interactivity, especially with the gravity gun. Next up, the best shooter game that has a party-like touch to it is without a doubt the original Star Wars Battlefront 2 from 2005. This game can be played in first and in third person, and it features battles in the world of Star Wars for both the prequel and the original trilogy era. Every faction has different playable classes with different roles and weapons, and the game offers a single-player campaign, split-screen multiplayer for both quick matches and galactic conquest, and also space battles that allow you to destroy capital ships piece by piece. It would be heresy for me not to mention the Halo trilogy as well. Halo Combat Evolved helped to establish the entire shooter genre on gaming consoles. The trilogy also offers an incredible story and a compelling gameplay based on the roles of each weapon and vehicle in the game. Halo 3 also features throwable equipment and much more refined physics and interactions between all the elements at play in any game mode, as well as a forge mode to customize maps and much more. The Halo trilogy set a high bar for shooter games in terms of interactions, story, amount of content and community features. You can play Halo inside the Master Chief Collection, and if you like the trilogy you may also like Halo Reach and the strategy games Halo Wars 1 and 2, as well as the spin-off Halo 3 ODST and the latest Halo Infinite as well. I can't guarantee that you would like the very different Halo 4 and Halo 5 though. And finally, Doom. I played Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal, and they are great games. They are both power shooters in which you take the role of the Doom Slayer, to brutally kill the demons that threaten humanity. The difference is that Doom 2016 is more cinematic and atmospheric, and Doom Eternal is more refined as gameplay mechanics, as each weapon has one or more uses against specific weak spots of the demons. In the new Doom games, every detail has been created to benefit the entertainment and fun factor you can get out of them, especially for Doom Eternal, so be sure to check them out! If you want to get spooked, I have three very special horror games to suggest you. Bioshock lets you explore a secret underwater city named Raptor, which has fallen in ruins under the pressure of its ambitions. In this game, danger is everywhere, and your morals will be put on a test to survive the city and its inhabitants. Raptor is so well designed that it never feels like it is a fictional city. Everything in the environment makes sense and many times you will be on the edge of your seat for the atmosphere that has built up. Metro Exodus is set into a post-apocalyptic world and you will be needing to find yourself and your mates a better place to live, a place in which you can escape from the world's suffering and be happy. 
Traveling across Russia, you will find yourself in all sorts of unexpected situations and perils, and horrifying mutated creatures will hunt you everywhere. The story is also very good at making you care for the people around you, especially the characters who are most close to you, and it all pays out in the end, especially if you made things right across the whole game. In Dead Space, you are Isaac Clarke, an engineer tasked with repairing the spaceship USG Ishimura, but things twist soon as you find out that the ship is infested by space monsters and homicidal maniacs. The art style and graphics are able to establish a tense and scary atmosphere along with the design of sound, music and enemies. Dead Space keeps you on the edge with its tension build-ups and foreshadowing. This game really likes to play with your mind. The absence of a traditional HUD helps the immersion, all the information is shown to the player through Isaac himself. Resource management is critical for survival, and it is yet another feature that builds up the game's atmosphere. The story is also very good and it will surprise you for sure. If you liked that I mentioned puzzles when talking about Half-Life, you are going to go nuts with these puzzle games. Portal 2 is a game based on simple but very effective concepts. In it, you need to get from point A to point B by solving intricate challenges with your portal gun, which allows you to teleport in certain spots of the rooms. The puzzles can be very much based on physics and gravity, as well as on many different types of items and special gels that change how you interact with the game. Luigi's Mansion 3 sees Luigi be the hero and defeat the ghosts and bows inside a spooky hotel. Luigi is armed with a poltergeist which allows him to perform many specific actions that will help him to reach the top of the hotel as well as defeating the many scary bosses that live inside of it. Metroid is one of the most important games that helped to create the Metroidvania genre, so I want to suggest the two best titles to get into it. Metroid Zero Mission is the remake of the first title released for the Game Boy Advance. In this game you are Samus Aran, the greatest bounty hunter of the galaxy, and in her shoes you will explore a giant planet and unlock many abilities for your power suit that will allow you to explore through specific actions and problem solving. I also suggested to play Metroid Dread, the latest in the series and probably the best one, but since it's a bit harder, Zero Mission may be a better pick to start. We are now in the action-adventure games section. The first games that you can't miss out on in this section are the main Spider-Man games. Now, since my latest PlayStation that I still play is the PS2, I will suggest you Spider-Man 2, the game based on the movie, but I am absolutely sure that the PS4 game and its sequels are without a doubt iterated upon the awesome features of this title, so play those as well if you can. Talking about the actual game, Spider-Man 2 allows you to play as Spider-Man inside an open world in New York and rescue people from the baddies. The main story is similar to the movie, and the voice actors are the actual actors of the movie. Spider-Man does actually attach on buildings to swing, so it's very realistic, and you can build momentum to move quickly if you're good enough. On top of this, there are many upgrades for your abilities, and also many random crimes on top of the ones placed around the map. Another title absolutely worthy of this list is Bully, or Canis can edit in certain regions. In this game you play as Jimmy Hopkins, a student of Bullworth Academy, who is sick of bullies and wants to be left alone, so he takes it in his hands to make the school a better place. Not only it's super fun to play as it features an awesome sandbox to screw around and make dumb stuff, but the story is also a great message against bullies, and it's a shame it got misunderstood when it came out. How could I compile a list of 30 games you can't miss out on without including one of the oldest genres to date? 3D platforms! For this genre I want to suggest you two iconic series. Let's start with the 3D Mario games. These games have timeless level design perfectly tailored to the moveset featured in each one of them. I can't state how much satisfying it is to reach certain power stars or collectibles that developers put into some hidden places at the top of a mountain, and oddly this is especially true for the oldest game, Super Mario 64. The soundtracks are also iconic pieces of gaming for each and every title of the series, and many of them have some sort of easing effect that will make you feel happy, which in this case is especially true for Super Mario Odyssey. The other iconic series I needed to talk about is Crash Bandicoot. You can either play the original games, the Insane Trilogy Remasters, and or Crash Bandicoot 4, though this last one is a little bit different and has more of its own feel compared to the classics. In Crash Bandicoot you traverse the 2D and 3D platform levels that require absolute precision and very good timing. In fact, some levels can really, really get hard, but if you're up for the challenge it's a great game. 
Since I mentioned the 2D levels in Crash Bandicoot, there is no way I can get away with this video without suggesting God World's Abe's Odyssey, or its remake new and tasty. This is a 2D cinematic platform game in which you play as Abe, a member of the Mudokon species who is destined to save all the others from slavery. This game has very clever game design, and Abe is one of the most unique characters you can play as in any game, as he is very vulnerable from enemies, but overcomes the challenges in front of him with strategies and mind control. Not to mention that the game also has a game speak feature to allow you to command the other Mudokons when you are attempting a rescue. Even if I didn't mention Mario Kart 8 Deluxe in this video, you were probably going to be interested in it, as it's quickly becoming one of the best-selling Nintendo games ever made. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is the very best party racing game. It features tons of fun weapons and hazards to throw during races and ruin friendships forever. On top of this, mastering a track requires quite a lot of skill, so it's both a matter of abilities and luck. But the best part is really playing in split screen or online. The game also has some fun arena modes, but if you're looking for more variety and don't mind an old game, Mario Kart DS also has some boss battles, the only title in the series to have this feature. Mario Kart DS is a little bit less exciting in the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, and there isn't probably anyone to play with, but it's so damn fun. While for my personal taste I am not very fond of fighting games, I am not allowed to make this video without talking about Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Smash is more than a fighting game. Featuring characters from all across the gaming industry, Super Smash Bros. is a celebration of all things gaming, and it could be enjoyed by both hardcore competitive fighting gamers and by filthy casuals such as myself. Each character has interesting movesets directly reinvented or inspired from the original gameplay concepts found in their own games. The roster is probably the biggest of any fighting game ever, and with 89 total characters counting the DLCs, it still manages to be very well balanced and competitive. As a casual I really enjoyed the single player, it was very satisfying to save the Smash world from these monster things. Out of all the real-time strategy games I played as a kid, the first Dawn of War and its standalone sequel expansions are some of the best games of all time. Not only these RTS games are set into a compelling, complex and interesting dark and futuristic universe that primarily exists in the form of a miniature tabletop game, but they are also rich in content, balanced and very entertaining. In Dawn of War you can play up to 9 different factions in the Soulstorm expansion, and enjoy the game as you please with the outstanding amount of different maps and game modes. There are objective-based game types such as capturing all the strategic points on the map, or simple modes such as Annihilation, in which it's just enough to destroy the enemy's high quarters to win. It is so fun to experiment what you can do with each unit, vehicle and upgrade and find the best strategy you can come up with to complete a specific objective, and you can play against the computer and have as much fun as you would have against the player. And on top of all this, there are a lot of mods that you can install into each of the Dawn of War games, which only exponentially improve the amount of fun you can get out of them. Although I have not yet played StarCraft, it would be criminal for me not to mention the two titles in this video. All the things I've said about Dawn of War also apply to StarCraft, with the difference that the computer games of Dawn of War have indeed been inspired by StarCraft, and that StarCraft is way more fast-paced and competitive. Not only this, but StarCraft 2 also allows to create insane custom game types without installing a single mod into it, which of course is a colossal feature. Without a doubt, the best sandbox survival game to ever be made is Minecraft. The only limit you have when playing Minecraft is your creativity. In this game you can build anything, from buildings to automatic farms, airplanes and much more. But this is just a part of Minecraft, as there are also magic items, enchantments, potions, mining, scary locations, hard bosses, PvP experiences and pretty much anything you can think about. The beauty of Minecraft is that it lets you define your own fun, while also having preset goals and objectives to seek into procedurally generated worlds that never feel cheap. And last but not least, the stealth tactic genre features Desperados 3 and Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. Desperados 3 is played from a top-down view, and it's based on a team of characters with very specific abilities which allow you to play with your own style, while also taking into account which one will be the most useful in certain eras and levels, to accommodate your planning and strategies in the best way possible. Desperados 3 is not an easy game, as each encounter is like a puzzle that can be solved in many different ways, and it's outstandingly rewarding to find the solution to sneak through any area without being noticed. 
Splinter Cell Chaos Theory is instead a third-person stealth game in which you play as Sam Fisher. Sam can climb on most of the game's geometry to hide himself and surprise his enemies. And he has at disposal a lot of interesting gadgets and demo types to let the player choose how to approach each scenario. Especially considering that the levels in Chaos Theory are fairly open-ended and allow you to take many different paths to complete your objectives. I really really encourage you to check out any of the titles suggested in this video. Not only because you are missing out on a lot of the best experiences in gaming, but also because you might have missed your favorite series of all time without even knowing it. Subscribe for more variety gaming content! I'm Chris, the gaming enthusiast, and you've been inside the hidden odd box. Check out more videos if you enjoyed, and as always, thank you for watching, have a nice day, and game on!